If we're not familiar with it, the types of terminology we use when we're talking about wide area networking can get a little bit confusing. So let's take a couple of minutes and see if we can do a better job of understanding WAN terminology. So let's start from our office. Now, obviously, our office is where we're located at, where our network is, where all of our equipment is. Now, our office has a connection to the service provider, and the service provider's location is typically called the central office. That is kind of a misnomer. That is the local connection for the service provider that we are connecting to. That's their office where their networking equipment is. Now we're connected to the central office using the local loop. And that's just a term for that connection between our network and their network. The service provider then has a connection out to the long haul backbone network. Now this is their nationwide or worldwide network. And we refer to this as the toll network. So we're connected to the central office via the local loop. The central office then has a connection to the toll network. And the toll network is what carries our data from our site to a remote site. Okay, so let's take a closer look inside our office. Now in our office, there is going to be a connection point. Now this may be a jack on the wall. It may be an interface card. It depends on what type of connection that we have, but this is called our DMARC or demarcation point. Now the demarcation point is where responsibility shifts from the service provider to us. So everything on our side of the DMARC so the wiring, the equipment, everything that's on our side of that is going to be customer premise equipment or CPE. Everything to the other side of that DMARC, all of the equipment, all of the cabling, that is service provider equipment. And that's the responsibility of the service provider. We take care of the customer premise equipment or the CPE. They take care of the service provider equipment. So there's going to be a connection from the DMARC to another piece of equipment that's called data communications equipment. Now, depending on what type of connection we have, this can look a lot of different ways. It could be a standalone device. It could be something that's integrated into our router. Um, depending on our connection, it'll go by different names. So it might be called a CSU DSU or a TSU. So it can look a lot of different ways. But the key is the data communications equipment is what takes our data and puts it on the local loop. Now the data communications equipment is going to be connected to another piece of hardware, frequently a router or something like that. But the term for it in wide area networking is data terminal equipment or DTE. Now remember, this is a generalization. Your network may look a little bit differently. For example, your data communications equipment or DCE may actually be integrated into your DTE. So what we mean by that is we may have a CSU DSU or a TSU card inside your router. So it might just be one piece of equipment, physical equipment, rather than two. But the point is we have all of these functions being done. The data communications equipment puts data onto the local loop by connecting through the DMARC. The DTE or data terminal equipment connects our network. That's a gateway for our network, connects our network to the service provider network. Okay, one more thing. Let's talk about a couple of different types of networks. Now, the first type of network that we want to talk about is called a circuit switched network. And when you're thinking about a circuit switch network or circuit switching, think about it along the lines of like a telephone or something like that. So I pick up a telephone, I make a call, and it establishes a connection between point A and point B, my phone and then the phone that I'm talking to. Now, all of the data is going to follow along that particular path or that particular circuit. And then when I hang up, that circuit is broken. Now, there's two different types of circuit switch networks. We can have a permanent circuit or a temporary circuit, sometimes called a virtual circuit. A permanent circuit can be either through dedicated lines like a actual physical permanent circuit, or it can be through a dedicated path through networking equipment called a permanent virtual circuit. With a permanent circuit, that circuit is always up and it's always active and all data between point A and point B is going to flow along that circuit. With a temporary circuit, 
That circuit is temporary, so when we establish the connection, it builds the circuit. All data flows along that path. When we disconnect the network, it breaks that circuit, and then no data flows until we establish a new circuit. So our second type of network is a packet switch network. Now, when you think about a packet switch network, think more along the lines of like an envelope. Right, so I can take a bunch of information and I can put it in a series of envelopes and I can drop them in a mailbox. Now, when they're in that mailbox, so it can be carried different ways through the network. So some might end up on different trucks, some might end up on different routes. It doesn't really matter. Each packet is going to be routed or switched individually until it gets to the destination. So instead of having a dedicated circuit and sending all data along that path, we switch or route each packet individually. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of WAN terminology.